Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Kaki Retrospect here. Today, we have a very serious topic to address and that is literally what's going on in the world. I know that everybody at this point is talking about it. It's literally the word around the world at the moment. It's anything and everything that pertains to Black Lives Matter, anything and everything that pertains to literally our daily struggle. So yeah, I made a video prior to this one about the topic and it was in a completely different direction and I don't see it fit to upload it only because I was literally crying the entire time. I could barely get a word out. So I thought perhaps I should probably point this in a different direction just so I can actually try to articulate what I want to say. This topic is so near and dear to my heart. Grab your wines whatever you have and let's get to chatting just but anyways just to start off so i was a sociology major in college and i studied and took classes on you know the atlantic slave trade and things like that so i've read texts i've you know sociologists also have to do groundwork and talk to people and interview them and i've done all of that and every time i did that i always did it on a topic that surrounded us black people um the things that we've faced <laughs> all throughout our lives and and it's just it, it's time and time again it's kind of like the same things are being told and you know I've never felt you know just say I've never felt like you know super comfortable where I was especially if you are black growing up in a predominantly white community or going to a PWI predominantly white institution like I did even though people aren't overtly racist those microaggressions you'll always find them it's just like it, do, it don't matter where you go I don't I I, d I don't understand it and it's just like no matter how agreeable of a black person you try to project yourself as it's just like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're outspoken it doesn't matter if you are the agreeable black girl guy person it honestly doesn't matter the microaggressions they will probably follow you everywhere based on most of the people that i spoke to that was the consensus it's just that you will find them at the college you go to at the cafe that you like to visit at your job and it's just like it's so tiring i have written down a few of my experiences um with racism with microaggressions just so you guys can understand where i'm coming from i was likened to a slave at work i was told that because i used to work at a mall um i was told that sephora racially or at least the sephora in the mall that i worked at racially profiles um black patrons they follow them they are told to watch black patrons as they are shopping so another another instance my professor was naming ways that people could enhance their upcoming projects and one of those suggestions was doing blackface um i interviewed black students for a project on race and one interviewee told me that a white student in front of the entire class said that we should bring black slavery again like i said i went to a pwi okay that is liberal and a white student said that we need to bring back slavery and i mean there, there are plenty more it, it really it's really not an experience that i wish on anybody um <laughs> to constantly have to go through life go through the world always thinking about your skin color it's absolutely ridiculous to live in the world and not have to think that the reason why somebody did something or said something or a microaggression was was directed to you or anything like that to walk in the world and not think that the reason why that happened could have been because of the color of my skin unfortunately it's a freedom that black people just we don't have on a daily basis especially in america do not have that privilege and, and it really saddens me it, it truly does girl i'm already getting choked up but anyways so um okay so that's that on that in terms of efforts that people are actually putting forth to make sure that at least companies out here are being held accountable you know for who they hire because especially when people graduate and they go on to the workforce the number one thing that keeps people out of poverty is literally the amount of money that they make that is one of the things that is a tr true and common factor across the board when it comes to your economic advancement in the world right and i so appreciate people like jackie Ina, who is super vocal on her platform and has you know done the pull up or shut up you know we want to see the receipts like how many black people do you employ how many black people are in like management positions c-level executives like let, let let's see the receipts let us all see how many and i think that a lot of companies 
are coming out and they're saying oh yeah like we support black lives matter you know we're and this is i i really don't want to be out here like inciting more anger but you can't not be angry all of the performative allyship that's going on right like so we don't necessarily know whether or not these brands actually stand by us right they're kind of just saying it and so what is it about your words that you can really stand behind what can you show me right and a lot of them are saying yes like showing us the amount of black employees that you do have is important it's important for us to know there are a lot of brands out there that have released statements claiming that they understand or they empathize with our plights and things like that right however you know especially when we've seen like in the past like look at like becca cosmetics right who literally literally could not not for the life of them bother to hire a black hand model and I'll show y'all the picture who could not hire a black hand model to show off shades that are for us and they photoshopped a Caucasian hand. And then afterwards, after they got called out, because obviously they didn't know that the color of a black person's palm doesn't match the other side, okay? After they were called out, now they wanna say, ooh, sorry, now we've reshot. We've gotten somebody from the office, right? To, and that's another, you know what, that's another, that's another issue for another, for, for another video. We've got somebody from the office who was able to pose for us. Here you go. Sorry about that. Performative, all performative. You're upset, you voice your upsetness, now you've gotten a response, but at the end of the day, do they really care? Like, let's ask ourselves, did they honestly really and truly care? Had you not called them out on it, would they have called themselves out on it? Absolutely not right absolutely not even after they've done something like this it's just like but did you really learn from it and there's absolutely no way that you can surefire way that you can be like 100 percent positive they've changed right so my my best friend just sent me a post on instagram concerning milk makeup and how one of the employees again the overt racism the microaggressions and everything like that that she's experienced and it's just like let's just say i am not at becca i do not know what the employees go through i haven't heard anything so what if those experiences that were felt by that black woman at milk makeup you know were also felt at becca cosmetic but nobody has spoken out about it and during that time that we were all just like okay well um becca fix it and then they were just like, oh, we fixed it, um, everything's good now. All the while, their black employees are still suffering, you know? At this point, I don't think that they've addressed the woman, the black woman who called them out, but it's just like, at this point, does it matter, right? Does it matter? And I think that a lot of times, and this is another thing that I feel like we do as black people, we, we want to see everybody win, right? Like, we are a forgiving people, and honestly, that's fine. But it's just like sometimes we need to understand that these black dollars, they are so important. What was the figure? I have the figure. Black consumers as of February 2020 have a trillion, not a million, not a billion, a trillion dollars in buying power. That means that we literally have the buying power of a small nation we are a nation and to say that our black dollars don't matter that would be a lie it's such a lie that we didn't even have that amount of buying power back in the day when the montgomery bus boycotts were happening they were just like all right you you guys need to start using these buses because you run the business literally down to the ground and i and i honestly do feel like sometimes that's what we need to do these brands that literally aren't for us weren't made for us aren't made with us in mind constantly pander to us and they know they are well aware that if we said we're not buying from you anymore they feel it i'm not saying that at this point i'm not saying that they'd be completely run down to the ground but they would feel it they would feel it i mean i don't know but you guys tell me do you feel like this is a for real question do you feel like we have the collective consciousness to truly cancel a brand there have been so many companies that have been like exposed to support trump and his campaign and after all that he's done and put us through through these past couple of years there are companies who are backing his re-election and it's just like but you guys and it's not just us it has nothing to do with only black people it is everybody in that case it is everybody and i believe the list had on like home depot mcdonald's 
Taco Bell, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, which obviously is always caught up in controversy. And it's just like, these companies get everybody's money. But it's just like, I don't feel like people nowadays, and I don't just mean black people alone, I do not mean to single out black people. I think that people need to do better in terms of the companies that we want to support and things like that. Am I saying all white owned companies are bad? No, no, that is not the case. I think that a lot of the times they understand who their consumers are. And I think that sometimes, yes, there can be authenticity in those statements they release on social media, but it's really hard honestly to decipher because it's just, who do I trust? I really don't know. But I feel like in that case, y'all don't beat yourself up about it. Just try to do your own research as much as possible. Don't just believe everything you see on Instagram because I've seen a slew of misinformation being peddled around. But definitely if you do care where your dollars go, a thousand percent, please look it up. Look it up, There, there's research. Everything can't be uncovered. Businesses go through hell and high water to legally restrict what they put out. So they're just like, look, we don't. if we don't have to, we're definitely not going to. And so just, again, do your own research that would really help you and help to clear your conscience um, if you're truly concerned about that. Another thing, I'm really going all over the place with this, but I just feel like I just have a ton of racing thoughts going through my mind. If you wanna support the cause, definitely do things like protest. If you so choose, I know a lot of people are against protesting i know um even though they are doing things like also donating or signing petitions on as many petitions as you possibly can you guys realize that you know voting though a lot of people i've also seen just been talking about how much voting just does not work and to an extent i can definitely understand that touching on that when it comes to what's going on right now in new york with cuomo and him constantly coming out literally like a like a spokesperson but it's just like cuomo said one thing he said i'm with the protesters and people were ready and willing to put him in the oval office and i'm just like y'all need to have way more standards for these politicians as long as a politician speaks sweet nothings into our ears we're just like okay that's great mm -hmm. president and it's just like that's not the way that it's supposed to go right like it's just very perplexing as to how he can say that and in the state that he literally governs essential workers are literally being arrested as they're trying to go home home because there's an enforced curfew and they're out during the curfew and you know delivery drivers are literally being beaten on the street and their their bags confiscated they're literally being arrested this is happening in your state like this is happening in your state and you want to sit here and talk about you're with the protesters i don't see it and really that's 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 all i can and will say about that i think that especially with the kinds of politicians that we have today they're really just worried about being re-elected like these politicians were gathered and they were speaking on what's going on literally like with the social unrest he was caught on a hot mic literally saying that if i did not have a re-election coming up i wouldn't have cared again how do i know who's being authentic but especially when it comes to actions actions don't always show somebody's true intentions like there was this thread that was going around and it was just like these are police officers who are kneeling for the cause these are police officers who were hugging people for the cause and then literally they were just like but y'all weren't there a few moments later when they showered us with tear gas started arresting us though we were peacefully protesting pelleting us with rubber bullets that aren't actually rubber right rubber bullets <laughs> and i learned this and i just learned this i thought that they were completely made of rubber and that you really couldn't get hurt by them however rubber bullets are metal bullets enclosed in a thin layer of rubber and they can pierce through the skin there were videos i mean I'll, I'll definitely spare you guys the details but there are videos of people who were shot in the head at close range with rubber bullets what people show especially on the news is completely different than what is actually going on this whole thing with you know these politicians especially especially going out into these black neighborhoods or in the middle of protests you have literally everybody out here kneeling you have people out here raising a fist you have people out here saying that they're with the black lives matter movement marching you have people politicians and when i say people i mean politicians out here you know hugging people kissing babies cupid shuffling but sir but madams what are y'all actually doing this is not what you need to be doing you know and for you to come out here and think that showing off like that is is truly what black people need then you are sadly 
mistake. Let me tell you right here. Black people have been out here asking for equality. They ain't asking for nothing more. They said, just let me be equal and I'll be happy with that. Look, sir, what we truly need is reparations. And that's what y'all don't want black people to start asking for or demanding, I should say. And still with all of the protests and things like that, we're still being very polite. When it comes to racism, when it comes to black lives, when it comes to people who are literally gunned down for no apparent reason, you can't just not pick a side. That's not just really, honestly, you can't just not pick a side. That's not how it works. And it's so sad that, you know, that is the case. That if you do speak out, you, you could be reprimanded. You could lose your job. And it's just, it's so tiring, you guys. But what I feel like people need to stop doing is stop giving people who do have internalized self-hate so much attention. Especially with the Terry Crews thing. But currently, you know, he said something about black supremacy and, and I ain't even gonna get into it. I'm sure that you guys have, can look it up if you really want to. But again, I don't wanna give that too much energy. Seriously, please stop giving your energy to matters people that just don't matter. There's nothing that Terry Crews can do that would undo what you guys are doing right now in the streets. Stop giving it attention. These news blogs will stop talking about it as long as they, if they stop getting traction to their sites. So honestly, please do not give things like that your attention. But what you can give your attention are things that can help the community. And I know a lot of people are just like, oh, well, you know, I don't wanna know like how to help the community. I don't really feel comfortable donating to whatever cause because I don't entirely know where the money's going, what they're doing with it. Again, you could definitely sign petitions. You can buy black owned. I think that that's a another really important point or from black owned businesses i know that there are a lot of people who are not so much against it but do continuously vocalize bad experiences that they've had with black owned businesses and things like that but what we really need to realize is that we need to offer people a bit more grace don't discount a black owned business or don't discount all black owned businesses just because you've had a bad experiences with one two or a few black owned businesses because they're not all built the same they're not all run by the same person and i think that to just generalize black owned businesses as being unprofessional or the customer service is lacking like that is a thing i've heard across the board when it comes to black owned businesses but we need honestly we need to realize that we haven't had time right to get it perfect like these white owned businesses have we did at one point have towns that were absolutely filled with black owned businesses i'm sure that you guys have heard of tulsa rosewood in florida was definitely one of them and it just is an example of literally how we tried to make a name for ourselves we tried to create businesses to make sure that we are circulating money in our community and it was taken away from it was literally ripped from our hands people were bombed like they were killed decimated right like we haven't had time to perfect it but here we are literally trying to play catch up it is so important for us to make sure that we circulate our black dollars in our in our community before anything some people i've also seen argue that oh isn't that like also racist if you tell black people to only buy from black owned businesses one there is no way that you can tell people to only shop black owned there are things that black owned businesses just they have not been created yet and so it would literally be impossible to only shop black owned for all of your needs that's just the way it is right so you know the computers that we use i mean if somebody knows of one please tell me but i do not know of a black owned business that produces manufactures and then sells things like computers but what is the case is that you guys also need to realize that even though we are now like vocalizing you guys you know encouraging black people to buy black owned that this is a practice that people of other cultures don't necessarily even have to talk about but it is innate to them to spend within their communities so let me just read you guys some statistics so in terms of the lifespan of a dollar in asian communities it is 28 days for jewish communities it's 19 days in african american communities it is six hours so when black people say shop black owned they're literally just saying let's help circulate the dollar to help bring up the time that our black dollars spend at our own community or i honestly would like to know why do people feel so against doing things that other cultures are already doing just because we're now more vocal about it that honestly is a little confusing to me i've also seen like hair care products like the main choice is also another one that was black owned and then it was sold by its owner and it is no longer black owned a lot of people are confused about that one or can't Two is not black owned and a lot of people have been shocked to that. I can understand when people are shocked because they 
they market so heavily to black people you would have thought you would have thought it was one of us i also read some of the comments and people were just like you know it may not be black owned but it worked for my hair and i'm going to keep using it that's fine keep using it i don't think that people realize that when people say shop black owned or at least when i advocate for shopping black owned i'm not trying to say if you have products that you've used and they work for your hair or they work for you whatever it is to stop using them just because it's a white owned company if it works for your hair continuously use it but if you want to be a more conscious shopper and you do want to navigate through black owned businesses and things like that there are options out there put it out there that you're aware that it's out there and that's really it but i have definitely seen people basically on on the cusp of bullying people into buying black owned and shaming them for not buying black owned you guys we we don't need to do that there's no need for that. You know, when people say you attract more bees with honey than you do with vinegar, this is probably one of those instances. I understand if, if anything, I understand the importance of black owned. You can calmly and politely tell people what that means to you, what that means as your cause that you wanna fight for, that you want to promote, that you want to make sure people are well aware of, but to shame people for not buying black is not the way to go about it. Especially as adults, whenever we feel like we're being told to do something, we just don't wanna do it, right? And we wanna fight against it, though it could be something great and amazing. For us, we don't wanna do it because of the, the way that those words were delivered to us. As for myself, I definitely wanna be a more conscious shopper. There are products that I have that are not black owned, that I have purchased I'm not going to be throwing away those products I do not advocate for anybody to throw away what they've literally already purchased with their black dollars keep those products use them and if you want after you've run out to go and buy black owned do that but if you found something that works for you use that and you guys we really do need to be more positive more uplifting when it comes to things like this because I have seen people be mean to people it doesn't make you more black than them because you buy more black products than they do some people say that the reason why they don't buy black is because black products are more expensive and that's understandable there are a lot of kids who want to take care of their hair a lot of teenagers who want to take care of their hair do not have a ton of money to spend and if can too at five dollars is what they can afford then can too with five dollars is what they can afford what can i say about that you know what i mean of course you can definitely suggest cheaper alternatives for them and i think that that would be the most positive way there is Dollar Crow Club. I know that they're, they are really affordable, but who's to say that that would work for their hair as opposed to camp? can too again i think that just make sure to be mindful of the way that you guys speak to people especially your own like this is us you're speaking to us right be mindful of the way that you speak to people it really will have a lasting impression you are not trying to push them away from it you're trying to bring them towards it and also we also need to realize it's not just buying products that's going to help the community it is also literally us investing into our own communities buying from shops that are black owned is great it's amazing however we also need to realize that amassing capital for us and also passing that down to the younger generations i love spreading what i know especially to my sisters so i literally take my like i took my sister to dinner and we sat down and we spoke about finances and i know people are just like don't bring money to the table girl i bring it to the table i bring it to the table because it's important it is important to me that my sisters know about how to handle their finances how to save at that table at that same table that day she said that she didn't have a savings account we pulled up her phone in five minutes we created a savings account for her because she needs to know how to save her money she told me and expressed to me that she had never saved a large amount of money for her that was a thousand dollars and i was just like you have to change your mindset. We can do this together. She had a job, right? She has a job, she's a college student, she doesn't have any major bills or anything like that. So I was just like, it's possible. You just have to change your mindset, right? You have to want to acquire wealth for your for yourself. I trusted that she would take the knowledge, take what I told her and, and enact change and she did. A while after that, you know, because accumulating wealth takes time. A bit after that, she goes and tells me, she's like, girl, I got my thousand dollars and I was just, I was so proud of her right and that's that's the kind of mindset that we have to have you know if you have a message and you want to uplift people do it with kindness first and foremost do it with kindness but also it's just like you have to instill in people who are younger that if they don't build wealth for themselves nobody out here really is going to have their back right like we also have to realize that we need to tell them you know owning things matter one thing that black people do not have because we were not allowed to have them even after the end of slavery days and the end 
end of segregation, blase blase, like Tulsa and Rosewood are perfect examples of black communities that owned things. However, it was literally taken away from them. So we have to literally rewire our brains at this point, rewire the brains of our little ones to let them know that, that it is important. On one of the interviews that I conducted for a project that I had done, I was speaking to a black man um, in Brooklyn, Crown Heights, the area. And he said, you know, on the block that he was on, he was just like, all these houses used to be black owned and now they're predominantly Jewish owned. And I was just like, but why do you think that is? And he was just like, well, you know, when the older black people die, they leave the houses to the younger ones and the younger ones don't really understand the importance of owning property. And so because of that, they sell the property, get the money and spend it on whatever. But in terms of, again, like doing something like Tulsa or doing something like Rosewood where it's like or you understand that this area this is for us this is what we claim we have claimed this and that is something that we need to instill in ourselves we need to instill in the people who come after us that is how to build the community and I know it is so hard you know home ownership is is a very tough journey for a lot of people I'm sure that you can ask a lot of black people it is so super hard especially when you honestly feel like you just don't have the funds for it for the black people who have done it kudos to you but please make sure that you remind the people who are coming after you that it is important to keep this in the community but we can at this point realize that and make a change towards that i'm gonna end this right now because this is going on for entirely too long but two things dr king spoke out about he spoke out about social justice and economic reform the democratization of the economy was important a more even distribution of wealth was so important to him so they knew exactly what he was after the money he was assassinated because they knew what he was coming for so with that I honestly I want nothing but the best for for all my black folk I love y'all black lives matter they always have they always will and I honestly hope that you know even after these convictions lay down on the heads of those police officers that killed that man in the street that other cases are reopened other cases that they didn't get their justice i truly hope that we do not stop that we keep fighting for this cause that we keep fighting for what we know is right we cannot stop here it does not end here these things will keep happening if we stop with these convictions keep advocating for ourselves we need to keep disrupting okay the peace we need to keep making these people feel uncomfortable with our presence with our words because if we don't things like this will keep happening when trayvon martin's case happened a few years back i was in high school all throughout those years the response that black people are getting today is not the response that we'd gotten back in the day when zimmerman got off i was I don't know continuously sign these petitions hold people who are holding political offices accountable please um try to support the community the best you can and any other ways that you guys see that you have found that really benefit the community feel free to let us know in the comments down below on your instagram pages always be advocates for yourselves and what you believe in but yeah i really hope that all of this wasn't super duper all over the place i will definitely try to edit this to make it make a bit of sense i don't know but i really honestly do hope that something positive was taken away from this coming together during this time it's so empowering and it's really heartwarming to see uplift each other do not let this movement die, die down continue to talk about this workplaces universities what have you what not we're talking about it we're addressing it right these microaggressions i'm not standing for them right like these overt forms of racism you're going to be called out about it okay yeah so let's continue to see do that all the while our black people our black folks continue to be a corner of positivity because it is super traumatic to go through these times because it's just it weighs mentally on you every day already and then having to face it head on is also very hard for a lot of people especially those who go through things like anxiety and depression um myself included so let's all try to just be there hold each other up and do what we 
can. I will definitely try to leave some links down below if you guys have any like foundations or GoFundMes or anything like that that you think that people should donate to. Definitely let, leave those down below. But, or if you have any other ways that you feel like people can really help to benefit their communities and things like that, let us know. Let us all know because we could all benefit from that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and that is all for me today and I will see you in my next one. Bye.